There's no one I respect more in the film industry than these three people. Well, actually, four people, because the Russo brothers are on that short list of people. And, well, they're technically two people, of course. But my top two directors before the Russo brothers are Christopher Nolan, who directed my favorite sci-fi movie of all time, Interstellar, which I'm going to review in the near future. And Quentin Tarantino, especially Quentin Tarantino. Now, that doesn't mean I like him more or less than other movie directors. Christopher Nolan is still my number one. But to me, Quentin Tarantino is a first-rate motion picture artist. Period. Like, that's just how me and a majority of film connoisseurs perceive him as. And before I properly begin with this segment... And I will get to it, I promise. But I want to first get into how Quentin Tarantino, in a way, reignited my passion for movies. And why I do a weekly podcast show about movies and the cinema industry twice a week. Three years back, Quentin Tarantino conversed about his inspiration for a movie that he directed called Reservoir Dogs, which was released in 1992. In that 10-minute video where he talked about Reservoir Dogs, he said something that I still remember until this day. You don't know, sorry, you don't have to know how to make a movie. If you truly love cinema with all your heart and with enough passion, you can't help but make a good movie. So what he's essentially saying is that you don't have to go to film school, but I mean, it would still be nice to go there, but that's not the point. Going to film school is useless if you don't love cinema with every fiber of your being. Because let's say you direct a movie that you're not really passionate about. And unfortunately, we saw this with the Star Wars sequels. Then, the product is going to end up being stale, like mediocre. And the quality is going to be half-assed. Because the love for the product ain't there. That's why a director like Quentin Tarantino saying those words is very relieving because there are movie chefs out there who care about the movies that they cook. It should go without saying that Quentin Tarantino's insights are of significant value to me, as you are now aware. Which doesn't mean that I always agree with him, but it puts any movie into perspective. Now, let's say Quentin Tarantino likes cats, and this is just a hypothetical scenario that I completely made up, mind you. Anyone who likes cats is is like getting a number one haircut. They're asking to get ridiculed. I just want to get that out of the way, <laughs> okay? You know, I would then look at the awful movie Cats and go, you know what, maybe Cats isn't that bad because Tarantino, the movie Pope, liked it. He said that it was a masterpiece. Again, Tarantino never said this. Please don't get that wrong impression. Tarantino doesn't like cats. He doesn't. Just, no, okay? Because again, I made it up. My point is that, you know, I think that it's fascinating to read what a filmmaker with a substantial, you know, experience has to say about movies. Now, without further ado, Let's get into part two of the segment, where I am going to go over Quentin Tarantino's list of perfect movies, which he had revealed the other day on Jimmy Kimmel Live. If you're keen on listening to all of them, then, you know, keep listening to this podcast because I am going to go over Quentin Tarantino's whole list. Or better yet, if you want to hear Quentin Tarantino go over those movies himself, then just search up Jimmy Kimmel. And I'm sure that you're going to find it there. The first movie on Quentin Tarantino's list of seven is The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, directed by Toby Hooper. While this movie is relatively low when it comes to the production budget, it is known by movie pundits as having a very satisfying ending at its possession, and teenagers having to go through insane events with jump scares. Very fancy choice, Quentin Tarantino. Next on Quentin Tarantino's list is The Wild Bunch, directed by Sam Peckinpah. I looked at the Google reviews for it just now, and 
a user called Dave Morris says that it's very realistic, something that earlier movies have been lacking. We also have James Turner, who also uh, mentioned on Google Reviews that it is one of their favorite films. Catherine Gregory even made the assertion that it's the best Western ever made. So, there's that. The next and third picture on Tarantino's catalog of perfect movies is Young Frankenstein. Screen Rant pointed out that Young Frankenstein might contain silly humor at times, but Mel Brooks, the director of the movie, nailed the old-school horror design. Another movie that Quentin Tarantino has on his list is Annie Hall. Many critics think that Annie Hall is a charming spectacle, but to other movie pundits, it's a take-it-or-leave-it kind of film. We have, of course, The Exorcist, coming up on Quentin Tarantino's list. It is definitely, without a doubt, and in my humble opinion, that The Exorcist is the highest grossing horror movie of all time. Why I decided to review Smile for our Halloween special this year, instead of this one, I will never know. I might review The Exorcist in the near future though, so keep on the lookout for that. But for now, all you have to do is prepare yourselves for my Black Panther Wakanda Forever review, coming this Tuesday. I'm sorry guys, but I couldn't resist an opportunity to add a shameless plug, but no, seriously. I watched Black Panther already, I probably put up an out of theater reaction, so that should give you a quick tease of what my overall thoughts of the movie are. Moving on, we have Jaws. Who knew that a giant white shark torturing residents of an island would have so much appeal for a guy like Quentin Tarantino? I mean, hey, I don't blame him, he directed Inglorious Bastards. He is capable of viewing and directing cruel things. Anyways, we're pretty much at the end now of Quentin Tarantino's list. We have Back to the Future with brilliant and funny exposition all around. This movie is an instant classic, but you don't need me or Quentin Tarantino to make that assertion. Watch Back to the Future for yourself, and I'll give it a 9 out of 10 chance that you're going to come back with your faith restored in films. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this is Quentin Tarantino's list of perfect movies which we got to explore in this segment of the Cinema Courtroom Post Sentencing Hearing Show. What do you think about Quentin Tarantino's selection of perfect movies? Do you think that they're just? Do you think that perhaps you might disagree with any of them? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comment section below or our Twitter inbox at Cinema Courtroom.